Hello guys, welcome back to our channel. My name is Velileni Nkosi. In this video, I'm working on a previous question paper. The question is based on human eye. So human eye falls under the topic human responding to the environment. So today I'll be working on a previous question paper based on that. So here are the questions. So this is the diagram and the questions are here so you can work on these questions before you see the solutions so i will show you how we answer these questions so without wasting more time let's get to it so first of all i will label this label here before i start before i answer the questions i will give you the label so Number A, if you see number A is pointed at this round here. So this round, it's a ciliary muscle. Ciliary muscle is found in the ciliary body. This lens is controlled by the serial muscle. So A, it's a ciliary muscles. And then number B, it's this front part here. This front part is called cornea. So cornea is, is the transparent front part of the eye. So it allows light to pass through. So number B, it's a cornea. And then number C is this cavity here. So this cavity, it's a aqueous cavity. Inside the aqueous cavity, it's a aqueous humor. So aqueous humor, it's a sort of a liquid that is found in the front of the eye. So C, it's an aqueous humor. And then number D, number D is this small points here these ones are called iris so iris controls the opening of the or the size of the pupil so pupil is this distance in between the iris this diameter is controlled by the iris so number d it's an iris while number d are the ligaments so these ligaments are attached to this lens so these ligaments are called suspensory ligament so this is the suspensory ligaments so these are the labels for this question for this particular question so now let me get to the questions so the questions will be here and then the answers will be here here at the where i wrote solutions it's where we will put the answer and then the questions will be underneath the 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 sketch so now these are the names of these labels. And then question number one, say 3.1. So 3.3.1, say identify part B. So the part B, part B is a cornea. So like I said, cornea is the front part of the eye. So it's very transparent. Some they say it's a continuation of the sclera. So sclera is the outer part of the eye. So as the sclera continues, at the front it's a cornea so cornea is transparent it allow the light to pass through so 3.3.1 part b it's a cornea and then the next question is describe the function of the part d when a person is in dim light so we know that in dim light and bright light there is some changes happening in the eye so this mechanism is called popular mechanism so popular mechanism is when the pupil of the eye is changing its diameter so in a bright light the pupil becomes small in a dim light then the pupil becomes large or the diameter of the pupil becomes large so now we have to describe the functions or we have to describe what happened in a dim light so here let me show you an example this is the eye and then we have the iris so this is the front of the eye so the iris in the iris we have some muscles so if you see this white part here we have secu secular secular muscle so secular muscle are uh, this muscle that are secular and then we have the radial muscle the radial muscle are uh, radius they are sort of their radius so they're straight line so these two muscles are the ones that controls the diameter of the pupil so let me explain what happened in a dim light so in a dim light 
step and we are on 3.3.2 and then in a dim light the circular muscle relax so if we are in a dim light so this circular muscle they relax while the radial muscle contract so the radial muscle the ones that are straight they will contract then increase the size of the sac and then as they pull this and then the the to cause the pupil to dilate so as the radial muscle contract then this size here it becomes large so to dilate it means it the diameter of it it becomes big then then when it becomes big it allows more light to enter the eye because remember it's a dim light so in a dim light so the eye must make sure more light enters the eye so that we will be able to see so this is how we explain if a person is a in a dim light so this is the process of pupillary mechanism and then get into the next question the next question say explain the role of part a and e when an object is moving close so part a it's a ciliary muscle and then part e a suspensory ligament so the suspensory ligament is attached to ciliary muscle so whatever that the ciliary muscle is doing it has an effect on suspensory ligament so to explain what happened when you come closer this lens it must be more round so that it will reflect or refract the light to this pushing here to the yellow spot so that we'll be able to see so here we must explain how does this lens becomes more then so for this lens to become more round the ciliary muscle will contract so ciliary muscle is this circle here it will contract so when it contract it increases its size and then when it increases its size then causing the suspensory ligaments to slacken so when it becomes big the suspensory ligaments they become slack so now they are no longer tight and then when they becomes slack resulting in the lens becomes more round so now the lens will becomes more round and then when it is round it will refract the light to the uh, retina so this part it's a retina that is where the picture it is for so when it becomes round when something is closer and then it will direct the light to the retina and then that is where you will be able to see and then now let's get to the other question and then question number 3.3.4 so 3.3.4 here we have a statement you see glaucoma is an eye disease that can lead to blindness occurs when the excess aqueous humor cannot leave the eye because the drainage channel in the cornea and iris are blocked this blockage create more pressure in the eye which will damage the photoreceptors and the optic so here you are telling about this disease or this disease if the aqueous humor this liquid there is a excess liquid in the eye like excess liquid there is more than enough liquid in in the eye and then this will create a pressure inside the eye and then this pressure will damage photoreceptor and the optic nerves you know, optic nerves is this part that takes the information to the brain and then if it's damaged that is mean there won't be any information to the brain and then the photoreceptor are the ones that translate photos into the impulse or translate pictures into the impulse and then this impulse will travel via the optic nerves to the brain so that it will be able to interpret the picture so if it's damaged then the blindness will happen then let's see the questions question number a say give the letter that represent the aqueous humor so aqueous humor it's re is represented by c so three point three point four and number a the answer is c so c is the aqueous humor so aqueous humor is this liquid in front of the lenses or in front of the iris 
And then the next question, 3.3.4 BC, describe how the pressure in the eye may increase. So the pressure will increase because there is more liquid. So the, this excess liquid is not leaving the eye. So this will create more pressure. So to answer these questions, say number B, uh, if the drainage channel are fully blocked. So remember the drainage channel are the ones that release this aqueous humor or release excess aqueous humor. And then if they are blocked, then the excess fluid accumulated in the eye. So if they are, are blocked, and then now we have more fluid, and then more fluid equals to more pressure. Like here, if they say describe how the pressure in the eye may be increased, it is increased if the drainage of the channel is fully blocked and the excess fluid accumulate in the eye. Then this will create a pressure. So, and then the last question, 3.3.4c, the question say, explain why a person with glaucoma may become die. Remember, this disease damaged photoreceptor and the optic nerve. That, that means our brain will not be able to interpret the information that our eyes see or our eyes has captured. Because if the optic nerves are damaged, then no information will reach the brain so we will be able to see. So to answer this question and then number C, when the photoreceptors are damaged, remember the photoreceptors are damaged and then the stimuli cannot be converted to nerve impulse. So remember the photoreceptors are the one that convert the light entering the eye into the Im impulse. So if there is no conversion of light to impulse, then we won't be able to see there's no information that will be transmitted to the eye. And then another thing, the damage of the optic nerve prevent the transmission of nerve impulse. Even if the photoreceptors are weak in fight, but if the optic nerves are damaged, then they, we won't have any information transmitted to the brain. Then again, this will make a person blind. So if the damage of the optic nerve prevent the transmission of nerve impulses to the cerebellum for interpretation. So this is how we will, we will need to explain this process. So because this disease will damage the photoreceptors and the optic nerves. So if these two parts here are damaged, then there won't be any way that we will be able to see because they are the ones that helps the brain to interpret what we see. So this is how you will explain the process. So if you have watched this video to this far, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. If you are studying, good luck with your studies. God bless you. Thank you very much.